Hi everyone, good morning. My name is Zach Pittman and I'm the CEO of Orion's Guard. Today I want to talk about Blue Ocean strategy and how you can use this to separate yourself from the competition. So a little bit of background on why I wanted to shoot this video today. I was driving home from an appointment with a client and I was realizing I needed to probably get my car checked on. It's been a few months, oil change was coming up, it's making some weird noises, and I said to myself, hmm, why in the world can't I just sit at home and someone come fix my car for me? That would be incredible, right? I think everyone would agree with that idea. And that led me to start thinking about Blue Ocean Strategy. Now, what is Blue Ocean Strategy? So Blue Ocean Strategy comes from the book called Blue Ocean Strategy that was originally written by Chan Kim and Renee Mauborn. So this book came out back when I was in my MBA program and the first time I heard about it was right before my trip to Paris where we studied at ESCP which is the oldest business school in the world. It was created back in 1819. But before we went we had to read this book about Blue Ocean Strategy. And originally, the concept works like this. It's the easiest way to explain it, is you have red oceans and blue oceans. Red oceans, you wanna think of blood, because this is a, an area where you're creating a business in a market that is pretty much already there, because there's a lot of competition. For example, if I want to go create a pizza joint that just makes pizzas, I'm essentially competing with Pizza Hut, Papa John's, Little Caesars, so on and so forth, which means that market already exists and there are competitors already there. So the, the whole concept to get out of Red Oceans where you create businesses that are going to go head to head with these conglomerates is to focus on creating a new market which is called Blue Oceans. So this is a strategy where you try to, to define a new market to where there isn't a group of people really being served or they're underserved. So the reason I have this whiteboard out is because I wanted to draw some graphs around Blue Ocean Strategy because the best way to do it is a visualization and it's the best place to do that is a whiteboard. So to start with Blue Ocean Strategy canvases, what you really need to know is, hey, what's the idea I'm gonna pursue or if you already have an existing business. Once you have that idea, which I have, for instance, the app for auto services where you would click a button and someone would come to your home and change your tire or your oil or a rear light or something like that. Um, once you have that idea, then you can get started with the canvas. And I actually have not planned this out. I decided I wanted to try and do this without planning any of the aspects out for the canvas because I want this to be real time. So. I'm gonna do this right now and we're gonna see how it goes. So I might stumble along the way, but just bear with me. All right, so the way I start this off is I draw a high line, I draw a middle line, and then I draw a bottom line. All right, then I do ticks here in the middle of both of those, and then I'll start my first tick mark there. I always, I should start dating these to be quite honest, but then what I do is I'll do an app, I'll name it, I'll do app, for auto service and again you can do this on a whiteboard and transfer it over over to paper or you could take a picture of it I think of them both actually I've done this so many times all right so we know what we're shooting for here's our canvas what we're trying to do is we need to follow the canvas makeup okay and what that looks like is there's four pieces you need to figure out what you're going to decrease, figure out what you're going to increase, figure out what you're going to eliminate, and what you're going to add. Now again, remember this is for an industry. So whatever your product is, what industry does that fall into? Whatever your service is, what industry does that follow, fall into? So obviously this would fall into the auto services industry. If you're looking to uh, sell cars, that would fall into the auto in industry. If you're Let's just say you're like Uber, you're gonna fall into the taxi industry. Um, if you're doing Airbnb, you're gonna fall into the, um, the hospitality industry. 
So figure out what industry you fall into, and that's what you're looking for. You're gonna define the decrease, increase, eliminate, and add aspects for that industry. So what I do is I write them out down here. I just put a D, and then I'll put an I, then I'll put an E. So the best way to remember is die and then A. <laughs> so die A or A die, if you wanna do it that way. All right, so we've got our decrease, our increase, our eliminate, and our add. We've got our graph, and we're doing this for the app for an auto service business. So let's think. Auto service industry. Okay, auto industry, what are some of the key elements that pertain to the industry? So let's think. Um, what do they... You got to start and think. Okay, what are they competing on? Okay, so one is uh, experience. So years of experience. Um, another would be the type of services that they offer. So experience, the services they offer. Um, what else do they compete on? I'm trying to think of like a commercial. Uh, the products, they, the products and brands that they carry, are they carrying Michelin, for instance? Are those the tires? Um, so we could go with brands. Um, we could go with, uh, dang, I just, ah, specials. So they run specials or discounts. They compete on that all the time. Uh, I get those all the time in the mail, the little coupons, $29.99 for oil change. Um, another one that I would probably say are, um, it wouldn't really be a special, but it'd be more of like a, uh, let's just say a perk. Let's just call it perks. So like for instance, if you go, if I go to Co Honda of Concord, for instance, then uh, they've got coffee, they've got water, they've got TV. They even have a popcorn machine. I kid you not, they have a popcorn machine. Also, when you drive in, uh, it closes behind you, so you're in this nice area and someone comes and helps you. So I would say perks. We're going to add that there. Um, and that's five. Usually five or six is pretty good. Uh, let me think. Does anything else really jump out? They don't. And see, you know what they don't compete on? They don't really compete on speed. So I, I can already tell you off gate that speed is about to go down here for ad because it's an app and that's going to be the main thing is speed. Um, Specials, specials, we're gonna say specials um, and cost. We're gonna put that in one. The specials they're running really comes down to the prices they're charging in essence. So we're gonna kind of bunch that together. Um, okay, I think, I think that's pretty good. Um, nothing else really jumps out to me. One more, we'll do one more. We'll just do customer service. So we'll go with that. That'll be the last one. All right. Now, once we get those, I usually like to break this out. And I draw a little chart here. All right. Because what, the, what we're separating is essentially, remember I said that Blue Ocean Strategy is being able to create a new market. Uh, the way to do that is you're going to be having things you're going to add. And those ads are going to go uh, off to the right. So now that we have defined what the industry competes on, what we need to do now is we need to break this down into different sizes of or different types of businesses in the auto service industry. So we're going to do circles. For a circle is going to indicate a a small auto service business. This would be like. Bobby up the street who is going to charge you a hundred bucks. <laughs> He's going to charge you a hundred bucks to do your whole entire transmission. This is like the guy, the auto service that your neighbor recommends you to, right? That's what we're going to go with the circle. So we're going to call these your, your small, these are your small auto service um, providers. Okay. What we're trying to do here on this chart is we need, we're going to take those small businesses and rank them from high to low based on how it applies to these factors. So let, so let me show you. 
okay so experience when you go to a small auto service provider what do they usually tell you oh I've been doing this for 50 years right they are huge when it comes to experience what they've done what they know how to do what types of cars they've worked on if they run a BMW auto shop for instance it's very specialized um, that's all they've done that's what they really drive on so for experience we're gonna draw a circle kind of way up here. I'm gonna put that near the top. I can't imagine anything being much higher than that, okay? Services, the types of services that they offer. They typically won't offer every single item. They usually do offer a large bit. Um, most of them can do the very simple things. Um, so as far as services, they're not giving you the house, but they have more than the little. So I'm going to say that as far as the services they, that they go, we're going to pinpoint that somewhere around the middle. All right. We're actually going to put it right on the middle. Brands. I, from my own experience, that's not a big one for me. I don't think they're really competing on the brands here. So we're going to go down low with the brands. All right. Specials and cost. That is a big one. So... For small businesses, their costs are low. And actually, now that I'm thinking about this, cost and specials, to be quite honest, should really be separated. Um, let's separate it. So we're going to put that there. We're going to come over here and do cost. See, it's real time. Things change. We're gonna we're gonna do that as separate. So the specials that they run, um, we're gonna go low for the small businesses. For the perks, we're also gonna stay low. I've never been to a small one that's had a popcorn machine. Uh, barely had a drink machine. Customer service, they they do pretty well. We're gonna go back up with that one. And then cost, we're gonna go back down. So when we draw this graph, it looks like this. Okay. All right, now we're gonna use a square, a blue square to indicate the large ones. These are gonna be like your Honda, uh, your Goodyears, um, your Pet Boys, all right? So what are the large ones doing? How are they, how are they selling? All right, so experience. They have experience, but I don't think they're pushing it quite as hard. So we're gonna go about right there for a square on experience, above the middle, but in between uh, this dot and the, and the middle line. The services that they're offering. Now they're offering a ton of services. If you need something a little bit special though, they're usually gonna send you somewhere else. So it's not overly high. They're not doing every single thing either. So they're not doing like paint jobs, for instance. They're not doing intense body work either. So we're still gonna go down a little bit. Um, I would say we're gonna go maybe just a little bit above what uh, uh, the other auto service ones are providing. Okay, so brands. They're very big on brands. Usually, they, like Michelin, for instance, what are they pushing? Michelin. Um, Honda, what are they pushing? Honda. So they're brand driven, but it's usually only one. So we're not, it's not gonna be quite there, but we're still gonna go about right here on that line. Specials, these suckers love specials. It's not the key of their business, but they love daggone specials. So I would say, honestly, it's not a crazy amount, but it's not low. I would say it's they keep it pretty static. I get maybe those in the mail, let's just say every every other month maybe some every so often perks uh perks in there it depends on where i go we're gonna go we're gonna go a little low with that one i don't want to quite put that on the middle customer service yeah they're absolutely big on their customer service and then cost they're not that daggone cheap but they're not usually overly expensive so we're gonna go right back down to the middle so when we do this graph, well, I couldn't even hit the square. That that bugs me. All right, so we're gonna go 
go through the square, right? All right. So here's the graphs based on the large and small businesses. As you can see, they're fairly similar. So you get like a little downtrend here. It's a little stagnant, stagnant here in the middle. It's up here that goes a little up and then down. What that tells me is it's showing me that we got it right. If you have them and they're completely opposite, then you may not have done it right. Your graphs for what small and large businesses in that industry are doing should be very, very similar, okay? And in this case, we can see that it is very similar. Um, so we know that we're dead on with um, some of these things going on in the industry. Um, I think we're pretty daggone close. I don't think this is far off. So now that we've got our graph going, the last thing we need to do is our DIEA. So we need to figure out how we're going to differentiate our business from what these auto industries are already doing. All right. So we need to figure out what do we want to decrease? Okay. Um, that's the first thing. So obviously if this is an app, for instance, and we're, that's our idea. We want an app for auto service. If this is a decreasing idea, we're obviously not going to have any daggone experience. Um, so the easier way, instead of me going DIEA, let's just work left to right. We're going to go ahead and do that. So experience, that would be something that's getting highly decreased over time. It will become valuable, but experience, we're not going to be able to come into the industry saying we have tons of experience. That's just not going to fly. That's not something we can really in that we can really run the business on. So we need to come way off of the experience. Okay. So now we're on to services. So we need to think what kind of services are we running through the app? To be honest, we probably can't do everything because in order for, it would have to be a truck or something that's coming to your residence in order to do these. So it would have to be very few services like we're changing light bulbs or, or like uh, we're doing an oil change, we're doing a new, giving you a new tire, um, we're doing a checkup doing air filters, stuff like that. So the services would need to also be decreased. Brands. Now that's a tricky one, brands. Because for this app, we could be very brand driven. We could say we, on, we only have Hondas, Honda, we only have Michelin. We could actually use all of them and be very brand driven. But to be quite honest, I don't think it matters and I don't think people care too much. I think some do, but in this case, because this is blue ocean strategy, what we're going to do is we're going to completely eliminate the care for what brand we're using. We're not going to pr promote, I shouldn't use that term. We're not going to be driving the business off of the brands that we're using. So we're going to go with eliminate for brands, it's just completely gone. Okay. Specials. Um, that could go either way. We'll come back to that. I don't really know. I don't know. Let's see what we get for the rest and we'll fill in the holes. So perks, we're not going to have any. We're going to, we're going to get rid of that. Who cares? We're coming to your house. That's your damn perk. All right. Customer service. <laughs> yeah, I say that's your damn perk when I'm sitting over here like customer service needs to be great, right? So next, actually, what we're gonna do that customer service needs to be increased to the top. Customer service, that's gotta go up. Uh, it's an app, like people are gonna definitely have questions and calling, it's a new thing, it's a new industry. I would go way up to the top with the customer service. And then cost, and this one's tricky too. So it looks like cost here, you've got, you're down here at low, you're down here in the middle. <sighs> this one's tricky. So do we want to go below, do we want to go below? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to increase cost. Here's why. We are providing a service that saves people time. If we come in and we're competing on cost, I think that's foolish because someone could come in and do the same thing. I think we need to come in the market as a, as a premium, product because we're offering a service that doesn't quite exist. 
Um, it's not. I'm not saying that it's overpriced. I'm just saying based on what is charged when you bring your car in yourself, um, what they charge. I think we need to charge more because we're coming to you, and you got to take into account gas and what you're charging someone. Um, so we're going to increase cost. And then what was the one we needed to go back to? Specials. Ah. So. Let's see, we've got two for D, for decreasing. We've got two for increasing. We've got two for eliminating. <laughs> so it can go anywhere. Um, specials, got dog. We could leave it the same, but it needs to, it really should go into one of these categories. All right, we're not gonna eliminate it. Are we gonna increase or decrease specials? <sighs> I don't know, I'm stalling here. I told you it was, it was me just kind of trying to do this off the cuff. So for specials, I'm going to say, if you look at what Uber does in Airbnb, none of them really run tons of specials. So what we're going to do is we're going to decrease. I don't see a need for us having to run a lot of specials because that's what all the other ones do. They're always sending coupons of, hey, we got this special, we got that special. That doesn't mean we can't do them sometimes. So we're going to decrease. Decrease to the point that they almost don't exist. Okay, now that we have figured out all of the DIEs, now what we can do is plot our own chart. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a triangle for us. Okay, so now we've got the triangle that represents our graph. Okay, and we're actually gonna do like a, we're gonna do like a filled in triangle here. All right, so for experience, it's decreased. So our triangle is gonna go like here. For services, we decreased as we decreased as well. So that's gonna be, we're gonna put that like here. Let me draw my little fill, fill in, do my triangle filled in. I wish I could draw better. All right, brands, what did we say? We're eliminating. So when you eliminate, it goes down to the bottom. So we're eliminating brands. Specials was decreased, so that's gonna be like here. Uh, perks, we got rid of, we eliminated them, so they're here. Customer service, we're <laughs> customer service should be the best. Our customer service, honestly, it needs to be better than everyone else's. That's where I would drive that business off of. And then cost, what do we do? We increased the cost. So we're gonna come like here with the cost. Now, when we chart our graph, it's like this, this, this. Okay, man, then let me do like a little purple squiggles so we can, uh, really let it stand out here all right now if you look at our chart compared to everyone else's what do you first notice it's completely different <laughs> so we're they're all up here on experience it's, it's kind of bunched here for services there's almost a straight line between brand specials and perks but look you've got a wave you've got a crazy difference here between perks and customer service so if you just took all the points out and looked at the graphs, if you just look at the lines, they're completely different. This is how you were able to go into a market and be seen as a completely different company because you're doing things that are completely different than everyone else. The last thing you wanna do is not only are you doing what the norm in the industry is going to be, you're, you're putting it on its head you're gonna be adding a few factors out to the right. And that's really the hardest, the hardest thing to do. So if you notice, we already have one, and that's speed. We are gonna completely, completely drive the business off, off speed. Because what are we saying? It's the fastest auto service in the world. That's how I would push that. Um, because you press a, a button and then, okay, Joe will be there in two hours. It'll take him however long to do what he needs to do, right? So it'd almost be like, what is it, Safe Light? 
safe light, right? When they come and replace your windshield, it's almost like that, except with an app and it's for auto service. That is almost what this would be if you wanted to take a business model and, and model this off of it. That's pretty daggone close. So speed would be one added aspect that you would want to compete in the industry on. Um, and I w I'm probably going to refer to like uh, uh, Uber. So technology. So I would say the tech. The tech would be something else I would be competing on. We have the best tech. We have the best website. Uh, we have like a map in our app. So technology and the tech is something else I would push to, to separate ourselves. And I usually like to go after three. Um, I've only got two so far. So speed, tech. I would almost go with, um, let me think. I would say competing on something that's more, um, what's the word, like modern, something like that's edgy, social, um, it's for a younger crowd. Um, what would be a word for that? Modern? No. Because what I'm going after is kind of the, the cult, ah, there we go, like the culture or the style of the business. Um, very culture driven. Let's go with that. Um, and honestly, these can always change. I'm going to go with culture. Here's why. When I think of auto services, if you're like me, I grew up kind of in a rural area. When I think of a small auto service, I'm thinking of John Boy and Billy um, starting their little auto service shop, right? That the, the people on the, in the neighborhood all go to. Uh, when I'm thinking of the large companies, I'm thinking of, oh, uh, you know, I just go to them because I have a Honda or I go to them because I have an Audi or a Volvo or something of that nature. Um, maybe specialized. Maybe uh, specialized would be something that would fall into the industry. Um, and that could be an extra thing. But the culture, what, you, what I'm seeing a lack of is an identity. Um, yeah, of course, Honda has its own identity, and of course, Audi has its own identity. Um, all the, the small auto services seem to have a similar identity, but what I'm not seeing is a, is a culture or a cult following behind that, something that people latch onto like an Uber or an Airbnb. That's what I mean when I say culture. Uh, it, the business would be very uh, would need to be very involved in social media online marketing strategies would be, need to be very different I would probably go after guerrilla marketing tactics but to be quite honest I think more culturally driven um, probably doing ads that are a bit witty and funny on the funny side um, creating a bit of culture there a, a bit of difference of when you see that as a business that's way different than what these auto service companies are a bit more dull I think that's kind of what I'm getting at here. So that's what I would add. I would add speed, tech, and culture. Um, what you want to do is also chart these out on what kind of level you're talking about here. So let me get these to go over. So how fast are we talking? To be honest, that's going to be the key. We're like Jimmy John's here. So we're going to go up top with speed. The speed needs to be very quick. People have stuff to do. They're like, hey, you need to come change my oil. It shouldn't take that down on long. Tech, that also needs to be up here. I'll put that at the top. And then culture, I'm gonna go down here, but it needs to just have a solid culture. It doesn't need to be weak. It doesn't have to be crazy insane, but it needs to be solid. So then we could finish out our chart like so. This even more exemplifies the fact that this business would be very, very different. So there you go. Now we have essentially taken an idea that I had, when was this? I think last week. So we've taken an idea for an app for auto service. And now we have figured out what we're competing on. We figured out how we're gonna change the industry. And I love doing stuff like this. I love coming up with ideas of ways to break an industry in half. Something, instead of playing in a red ocean, to everyone else's rules 
they got to play by your rules now. And things like this are why small businesses are able to come in and start taking customers away from conglomerates that have been around for so long. It's tactics like this. So that's it. Um, this is how you perform a blue ocean strategy. Like I said, this was on the fly. So I'm sure some things could be moved around, added, probably don't make any sense on here. But this is how I do it. And you can do them over and over again. I would recommend maybe doing it again, seeing if you come up with the same things. Or maybe getting a friend and talking through it with them. I've done that at times. But again, get the book. Read it. There's a lot of good info in there. Go after your, your, your blue strategy canvas. And let me know how it goes. So I wish everyone luck. And I hope this helped. So I'm out. And until next time. Deep in my soul